Goku versus Saitama is a topic I've been wanting to talk about for a while, and now I have the chance to do so. I won't waste your time and I'll just get straight into the video. Saitama loses extremely badly, like it's not even funny how bad he loses, and before you all try to say well he can one punch Goku because he's the one punch man and he always one punches people within his own verse, but that's the thing, he doesn't. He didn't one punch Boros and he also didn't one punch Garo when they fought either. And Saitama being able to one punch people is only exclusive within his own verse. Because not only is that something that one, the author of One Punch Man has made for his specific verse, this wouldn't apply in the hypothetical crossover versus battle since one wouldn't have any authorial control over said matchup and can't make Saitama be able to one punch his opponent. I've made a video covering Saitama versus Madaka for a donation from a subscriber. And I think the points I made about Saitama not being able to one punch people outside of his verse were really good, so check out that video for a quick in-depth explanation about that. And with that out of the way, I'll go over Saitama first. To start, he was able to combat Boros who was stated to be able to shave off or blow away the planet's surface. Ranges for this feat are from multi-continental to planetary or possibly even star level. The feat can start from multi-continental because Boros says he can blow away the planet's surface. Doing a feat like this would mean destroying multiple continents around the entire planet, which is a safe lowball. And at the highest, this feat can be planetary if you think him doing this would destroy the entire planet. There are also other statements that you can use to scale Boros to planetary. And this statement says that Boros' latent energy is so powerful that it can blast away entire planets. So I do think you could use this to say that Boros could be planetary. You could also get him to star level by using the statement that says Boros' collapsing star roaring cannon is powerful enough to obliterate stars. You can further push star level Saitama by using the feat he performed in his fight against Cosmic Garo. When Saitama and Garo clashed fists, the impact of their punches were so great that it seemingly either moved or destroyed countless number of stars. Now, I personally interpret this feat to be star level, but some people argue it to be multi-galaxy. But however you want to scale this feat is completely up to you. I'll just say that this feat is star level for the sake of simplicity. And as for his speed, you can scale him off of Flashy Flash, who was stated to be the fastest s rank hero, and is said to be able to achieve victory in an extremely short amount of time, or in other words, at the speed of light. Now I used ChatGPT and asked it for clarification on if Flashy Flash being able to achieve victory really fast is related to him being light speed, and it does actually agree and confirm this to be true. And if you need further proof of Flashy Flash being light speed, he, Goro, and Platinum Sperm were able to create dense light beams through their wall movement speed alone. This same Flashy Flash is nerfed since he didn't have his sword with him during this battle. And Flashy Flash admits that Saitama surpasses his FTL speed. And we see Saitama casually reacting and keeping up with Flashy Flash. So this puts Saitama at MFTL speeds. You can also get Saitama higher than this by using his feet against Cosmic Garo where Saitama was creating dense beams of light with his raw movement speed across the entire orbiting moon of Jupiter. So you can argue this increases Saitama's speed to MFTL+. And as for Saitama's ability, he doesn't really have any notable abilities except for the fact that he can grow his strength within the battle, and if he's feeling intense emotions, then his abilities rise exponentially. There are two different translations of this statement that I think are important to talk about though. In the first translation, the narrator says how nobody equaled him in strength or notice his growth and due to his intense emotions, his abilities were rising exponentially. Now, if we look at the definition of abilities, the definition says possession of the means of skill to do something. And the second definition says talent, skill, or proficiency in a particular area. I do think that it's Saitama's talent or skill that is rapidly growing and not only just his strength because we get various different statements of Garo taking note of Saitama's skill increasing and he says how Saitama is copying his techniques and even teaches him how to reverse time because he knows Saitama can copy him. And while his strength also grows exponentially, I do think his talent or skill plays more of a factor in this growth, but I'll leave this all for you to decide. And as for the second translation, it says how Saitama's rate of growth suddenly began to soar exponentially due to his upsurge of emotion. This one is worded slightly differently, but both talk about his rate of growth increasing and the second translation really doesn't mention his strength increasing like the first one does. We know his strength is increasing because of Garo's statements, but this is trying to emphasize that Saitama's skill growing as opposed to just his strength. I'll let you all choose what interpretation you want to go with for these translations. And there are also two different statements Cosmic Garo makes about Saitama's strength as well. 
The first translation, Garo says that Saitama is infinitely strong and that he'll infinitely copy him until he surpasses him. And the second translation says that Saitama is limitlessly strong and that Garo will copy him limitlessly until he wins. Now, infinitely and limitlessly both sound the exact same. You could argue that they could both be used interchangeably within sentences, but these two words have slight nuances and variations that structure a sentence differently to each other. For example, I asked ChatGPT to give me definitions and differences of both infinitely and limitlessly, and to give me an explanation of the nuances between the two words. And ChatGPT told me that infinitely means without end or limit and something that is unbounded and has a measurable quality. And limitlessly means without constraints or boundaries and implies an absence of limitations or restrictions. I also asked it for the same thing for infinite and limitless. If you want to read the text on screen, you can pause the video, but if not, let's continue. When using the definitions and aligning them with the context of what Garo is saying, it makes more sense for Saitama to be limitlessly strong since he actually doesn't have any constraints or boundaries to his power, and him exponentially growing with instantaneous bursts of power and skill further backs this up. So to conclude on Saitama scaling, you can scale him to around star level to multi-galaxy depending on what you prefer to use and his speed being MFTL to MFTL plus, and his ability to exponentially grow his power and skill, especially under emotional distress. And with all that being said, let's get into the stand from Earth, Son Goku. Goku and Beerus' fists clashing were creating shockwaves so powerful that they were threatening to destroy Universe 7's entire macrocosm. This macrocosm houses Universe 7's mortal realm, the Kaioshin realm, King Kai's planet, heaven and hell, and the demon realm. King Kai's planet being said to be higher than the heavens and in a realm beyond dimensions that humans can't understand, and the Kaioshin realm, which is outside of the macrocosm entirely, would have also been destroyed as well. This should give Goku 4D attack potency, and this feat should be at the low end universal plus to the high end low multi. And as for Goku's speed, you can scale him to either infinite speed or immeasurable speed, depending on which you find to be more reasonable. For Goku's infinite speed feat, Goku fights against Granola and Goku notes that Granola is using a technique that is faster than instant transmission, making Granola infinite speed. And because Goku can react to this Granola and grows much faster and stronger as the fight goes on, you can place Goku at infinite speed. Some people interpret this feat as immeasurable speed since Goku says that he's moving faster than instant transmission, but the problem with this is that they're still within Universe 7 and Universe 7 is still bounded by time, so although he is faster than instantaneous movement, because they're still moving within time, he'd still be infinite speed, just faster. And as for his immeasurable speed feat, you can scale Goku off of Hit. Goku was able to predict Hit's time skip, which was stated to allow Hit to stop time for everyone except himself. And depending on how strong the opponent is, the time skip will either affect or not affect the opponent. Some people try to use the Dragon Ball's verse and try to say that, oh, well, because his time skip only affects those near or weaker than himself, that he isn't actually stopping time or actually utilizing time against his opponents. But we know that this isn't true. It's been said multiple times that Hit is actually using time with his time skip, so Goku is indeed able to move beyond time. This is also further supported with Jiren, with Vado saying that Jiren surpasses time, and if you think this is literal or not is up to you. When Vado says Jiren surpasses time, Jiren is still bounded by mortality and other things of that nature. Vado is just saying that Jiren surpasses time based hacks or abilities, which has been shown within the series. And for Goku to be able to scale to Jiren, he would also have to have to be able to surpass time-based abilities as well. But I'll leave this interpretation up for you all. And as for Goku's abilities, he has various different things he could use, like his Super Saiyan forms, which give him various different multipliers to his power. And he also has access to Ultra Instinct, which allows his body to auto-dodge attacks and gives him another substantial increase to his power. And with all that being said, who is stronger between Goku and Saitama? Goku wins this match by such a degree that it's really not even fair. Goku's stats are so much higher than Saitama's that he'd unironically one punch the one punch man. Saitama wouldn't even have time to try and exponentially grow or adapt to Goku and Goku would just speed blitz and one shot Saitama. I know some people are angry but I just don't think Saitama really has anything he could do to actually beat let alone harm Goku. But I'm sure there are people out there that disagree. So if you'd like to tell me your thoughts in the comments down below, please do so. 
Don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and comment on the video if you enjoyed. And I'll see you all in the next video. Take care.